Okay, so welcome back to another video. So today's video, we're actually given um, some sequence of functions, but also with that given, we want to find the limit. So we, uh, we are given that if a sub one is equal to the square root of two subtract one, and then for some recursive formula of sequence, a sub n plus one is equal to n plus one a sub n plus n, then we want to find the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the power n times a sub n divided by n to the power n plus one half. So it's um, basically the way we start off this problem is more we want to find um, Basically, we want to find a little bit more of a generalization pattern, specifically when we're looking at some a sub n plus one. Well, really, we were looking at a sub n in this sense. We find that generalization that we can actually eventually plug this back into our limit. Then we just use the algebra. And there's also um, a formula we'll be using that I don't think that I've covered in this video before, but um, this is actually known as um, Sterling's approximation, which says that it's uh, it's an approximation for factorials. So that actually gives one way of a surprise of what's expected to see in today's video. Um, in a sense, um, well, I'll explain that formula just um, how that's written and then um, how it's how it works in a sense. But um, I'm not going to go too much over it. We just actually just want to find this computation. So um, I don't have anything else I want to add. So let's actually just um, jump in. So if we give in a sub n plus one of the following sequence right here, let's suppose that I add one to the constant of our um, generalization sequence right here. So if we say a sub n plus one, then plus one, so I'll just add one over here. So n plus one, then times a sub n plus um, n, then plus one. You can clearly see that there's n plus one and n plus one here. So in a way it forms, you know, binomial factors. So we can say that this is just n plus one quantity, then multiply with a sub n and then plus one. Now suppose that if we actually take this uh, step back, so let's go back from one, pre or, um, one previous term. So a sub n and then plus one. So then a sub n, then plus one. Okay, so if we just replace everything from the n plus one terms for n instead, so this would be, um, so a, n plus one and then n, so that means we're subtracting one terms of our, you know, sequence. So this means we have n and then multiply with a sub n, then subtract one of um, then plus one. Okay, we do this, let's say we do this again. So a sub n subtract one, then plus one. So we just do this again. So this will be n subtract one, multiply with a sub n subtract two plus one. Okay, maybe we'll do um, one, um, we'll actually do another one and then we'll follow with a little ellipse to see like what's the pattern here. So a sub n subtract two plus one. So then this is just substitute. So this will be n minus two. Then going back, so this will be a sub n subtract three, then plus one. Okay, if we just keep going. Then suppose if we go to the final two terms for a sub three and a sub two, we already got a sub one over here. So that's why we just want to um, pull the pedal, pull the brakes there. Then we have a sub three plus one is simply just equal to three and then times a sub two plus one, then a sub two plus one is equal to two times a sub two or excuse me a sub one and then add this with one and we actually noticed something with the um with the constants yeah rather before um it um we're being multiplied with our you know um sequence of formulas over here so you'll notice that everything is in decrease so it's um nested when you're actually plugging in each of the sequence so here we have uh, for example three sub a sub two plus one if we just plug this back here so it'll be three times two um times a sub one plus one if we go back over here you do the same thing but then you'll notice that this is actually in a way of forming of um, factorials if we're decreasing you know each of the terms by one and then multiply with using finding its product so then we can actually say that a sub n plus one um, or right, just a sub n itself and then plus one then we can see that if it's just a nested of products then we can actually just replace this with a factorial and so we have the generalization that a sub n then plus one is simply just equal to n factorial of a sub a sub one specifically since that's um, where we're starting at and then add this with one and if you want to um, 
well, hold on for a sec. Um, then we plug, then we just substitute back the a sub one with square root of two subtract one. So here, um, that means n factorial then times, um, what is it? Square root of two, subtract one, and then plus one simply just equals the square root of two um, then times n factorial. And if you want to get a sub n by itself with the generalization, so we have that a sub n is equal to the square root of two, multiply with n factorial and then subtract one. Okay, so I'm gonna um, box this. So we actually have some generalization we we're working with, especially since we want to compute the limit. So let me put this in the um, purple. So next I want to um, put in a, um, the, define a formula. And I already said that this is actually known as uh, Sterling's formula. So Sterling's formula, I'll um, put it this, well, I'll actually write the name in full. Or in other words, you can actually just call this um, Sterling's approximation. That's another way to say it. Another way to write this is um, the approximation of factorials is defined as n factorial is asymp um, asymptotic. That's a hard word to say, but um, in other words, it's um, asymptotic to um, the square root of two pi n. That's inside the you know the radical. Then multiply with n divided by e and then to the power n. And if we want to write this a little simply, this is actually going to be helpful later since um, we're actually doing a lot of rewriting. Square root of 2 pi n, then we just write this in terms of the exponential base. So it'll be times e and then um, n times ln of n and then subtract n. So asymptotic, it's another way of saying is that um, the ratio, both of the quantities ratio tends to 1 as n up tends to infinity. So using this, we can actually do a little bit of a substitution do dealing with this um, limit we have. So let's actually um, do that. Give me one second, I just wanna fix something. So now let's actually compute the limit. So let's see if we just plug, um, so let, let's not worry about the limit set, but let's just focus on the, um, the function we are taking the limit of. Then we have that e sub n um, times a sub n, or e to the power n times a sub n, then n times uh, n to the power n plus one half. Okay, so we'll just substitute this back in. So this is e to the n, then divided by n to the power n plus one half. Then inside, I'll just replace this with the our um, a sub n formula we found. So the square root of two, then multiply with n factorial, subtract one. Then in other words, we can actually replace this using the um, Sterling's approximation asymptotic. So it's a nice substitution that's helpful to use. So e sub n, then divided by n, to the power n plus one half. Then we have the square root of two. Um, then multiply with the square root of two pi n, and then um, e. We're going to use this substitution or another rewritten expression from the original. So subtract n. I'm going to utilize some room here. So I'm going to write this on the this side right here. Okay. So we actually do a little bit of you know um, simplifying. So square root of two, then times square root of two over here, then this you know square root of four. I can factor that out. Um, then that will also mean I can write this as two times the square root of pi. But what we can do here, so there's a lot of um, a math algebra. So I'm just gonna save the steps here. So we have the square root of n. What I can do from there is, well, it's also because we have to distribute the e sub n divided by n to the power n plus one half into all of this. So the square root of n times e sub n, well, let's just focus on that. What I can do from there is I can actually write that square root of n in terms of an exponential base. Then what we can do with the exponents is actually combine with the sums of the exponents and using the, you know, the exponent rules associated with over here as well. There's also supposed to be a minus one over here too. So minus one. Then with doing all this, we actually get that this is um, focusing on just the numerator specifically. We have e to the power n, then plus one half ln of n. Add this with n times ln of n and then subtract n and then this is divided by n to the power n plus one half. And then now distribute the e sub n, this quantity right here back into one. And then this is right here, it's just e to the n and then divided by n and n plus one half. Now, if you actually do some, um, if you actually cancel out some terms, you have n and minus n, that gets rid of itself, okay? Not a big deal, but um, we have e to the one half ln of n. In other words, that's the same thing as writing n to the power one half, and n times e to the um, n ln of n. So that's just e. That's just you know um, 
n to the power n, but guess what? That's actually the same thing as over here of the denominator. So in other words, the two just cancels each other out, in other words. So that means we're just left with just one as that. So that means we have two times the square root of pi and then subtract e to the power n divided by um, n to the power n plus one half, okay? So now, all this simplified out, now let's actually finally take the limit of both sides. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of our given, so e to the n times a sub n divided by n to the power n plus one half. We take this equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, let me put this in parentheses, so of two square root of pi, and then subtract e to the n, and then divide by n to the n plus one half. We can just use, you know, with the uh, laws of sums of limits, so we could take the limits of both of these separately. Um, this is just going to be itself two times square root of pi, there's nothing to plug for n, that's obvious. Um, but now that leaves the question on how to evaluate the limit as e of e to the power n divided by n to the n plus one half. So um, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot going on with this computation over here. So I'll save you the steps and give you the explanation. So what we can do from there is you can actually write, um, well, write this rational function as, you know, just the numerator itself. So in other words, just convert this back with the exponent. So this will be e to the power n multiplied by n to the power negative n subtract one half. And then we can actually do a little bit of a trick and actually write this in terms of a square root. So really that would actually have to mean that this is actually supposed to be two n on the top, or rather the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of e to the power two n times n to the negative two n subtract one. And really we just have to evaluate what's inside that radical. But what we can do from there is actually just um, do that same step where we actually take some function, write that in terms of an exponential base. So there's the natural log as part of its exponent. Then eventually, if you actually do a lot of the algebra with the exponent itself, you'll get a e to the, um, specifically, if you write this out, you have e to the power 2n minus 2n times ln of n, subtract ln of n. And if you just evaluate that limit that's a little more involved, but I'll just give you the gist you'll get an e to the negative infinity after taking that limit, which we all know that's gonna equal zero. So I know there's a lot to intake, but uh, I'm not kidding when I said that there's actually a lot of work going on. So I'm trying to um, give you the gist. I know everybody knows how to do limits. So um, it's, in other words, it's a way of saying that it's self-explanatory. So that's gonna be zero. We take the limit. And so therefore we are done. The final limit of our given is actually just equal to two times the square root of pi, just like that and we are done. Oops. Uh, the final answer in, again, the purple box, just like that, but that's not the final answer. This is the final answer. Oops, sorry. Um, so that's another, um, that's a very interesting take on using, um, you know, sequence of, you know, a recursive sequence and then put that in the form of a limit. It's actually kind of similar to when um, a couple, many videos back, I did something with the, you know, limit of Pascal's triangles. So it's another way to like, uh, that's more of a, like an implementation um, in a higher degree. So, that, but that was also fun. If you want to check that out, I'll leave that in the link in the description below. But there it is. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.